Now, our build-up on Super Sunday was dominated really by all the talk off the pitch at Chelsea and the government sanctions on their owner, Roman Abramovich, and what impact that had on Chelsea as a football club. Now, Jamie, you've had some criticism from Chelsea fans because one of the first things that you suggested was that Manchester United should go for Thomas Tuchel, in effect taking advantage of the situation that Chelsea have found themselves in. What do you say to that criticism now? Well... <laughs> It's fair to say I had a few heated discussions, shall we say, at Stamford Bridge yesterday and the Chelsea supporters, the same as any set of supporters, are very passionate about their club and at this moment feel like the world's attacking them and they're defending their club. So I, I totally get that, but there was a few conversations about that. Uh, I wouldn't change my opinion on it. And the reason why I think it's a little bit hypocritical of Chelsea supporters is that if, if teams, whether that's Manchester United with the manager or people thinking they can get Chelsea players, are going to take advantage of the situation that they're in right now. Chelsea have been doing that for 20 years. That was the big thing of Roman Abramovich coming. We can throw our money about and we can get who we want. We're going to go to Manchester United. The first thing we do, they're a money-making machine, United. We want to become that. We're going to get Peter Kenyon, their CEO. We'll go to Liverpool and take the best midfield player in Europe and destabilise that club for two, two summers. Didn't get him. We'll get Ashley Cole, invincible, won everything at Arsenal. Yeah, we'll go and get him. We'll get caught tapping up, doesn't matter, we'll pay the fine. England flying at the time with Sven Goran Eriksson. England manager, no, we want him as Chelsea man. Don't worry what he's doing with the FA or England. We'll have him and we'll, we'll pay the fine, don't worry. We'll get caught with that. So Chelsea Football Club have taken advantage of every other club in the last 20 years because of Roman Abramovich. So if I give an opinion on someone taking advantage of them, that's just a fact, that's just the way of life. And that's the way it may be for Chelsea, you have to accept that. Some of the things with Chelsea in terms of closing the club shop and maybe stopping young kids getting Mason Mount on the back of the shirt and things like that, I don't agree with that. And I certainly don't want Chelsea to go to the wall, I don't want that at all. But if that's my opinion of it, I certainly don't want Chelsea fans next time I go there questioning that opinion because that is exactly what Chelsea have done for 20 years. Your opinion. <laughs> it's a fact. It, well, it, a lot of it is opinion. But the interesting thing now is where this story goes next. Uh, we read that it's final bids on Friday, Gary. We also read that there are over 150 interested parties. Is it in everyone's interest that this situation is resolved as quickly as possible? Yeah, I mean, I, I agree with what Jamie just said there. There's no way that Chelsea can go bust. The government are going to have to ease restrictions if need be. I can't see how a £2 billion, £3 billion sale can go ahead in the next 15, 16 days, which is apparently the amount of time that Chelsea have in terms of needing to bring new money in. So I think the government, to be fair, know that Chelsea Football Club, hundreds of years of history, a fan base behind them, an important part of what would be the community that's locally there, um, cannot go bust. They're going to have to make sure that a sale goes through and that a new owner is found. And obviously whatever happens to the proceeds is up to the government. Um, but it's a wake-up call. It's a massive wake-up call this last few weeks for football. It's a massive wake-up call for me. Uh, my historical position on, shall we say, uh, new money coming into English football is that it's improved the competitive landscape enormously over the last 20 years. I'm a fan of the traditional elite, as is Jamie, Arsenal, Manchester United and Liverpool. But I've welcomed Jack Walker's money at Blackburn, Roman Abramovich's money, the fact that Manchester City have come in and challenged the elite. We've got an unbelievable Premier League with great football teams. Um, and we've benefited from that. Just globally, the Premier League is seen as an absolute model for everywhere. I've also recognised that when states have come into English football, they've improved communities around them, um, as has happened in East Manchester with, with Manchester City, as hopefully would happen with Newcastle. And I've also thought that when that sports washing term has been mentioned, I've maybe seen it naively that that can be... We could have a positive impact through sport on the communities and local people in the countries that are investing, that we can actually make their lives better somehow, that those states will soften their what would be very hard stances in their what would be appalling um, behaviours that they have, and that we would try and make positive change through sport and we'd rise above it. However, in the last two or three weeks, I said last week that those sort of what would be views are, are being greatly tested to the point now whereby I'm even thinking, you know, I'm probably wrong here. I'm wrong. I think it's coming absolutely hurtling down the street at football. The Premier League won't know what to do with this. And to be fair, I can see why. I can imagine the executive of the Premier League sat there looking at their owners and saying, what do we do with this situation a couple of weeks ago? You've got Chinese money sat over here. You've got Russian money sat over here. You've got Abu Dhabi money sat over here who are abstaining at the UN in that period. You've obviously got the Saudi money at Newcastle. And they'll be sat there very nervously thinking, we don't want to set a precedent here, what do we do? And the Premier League only reacted 
after the government had sanctioned Chelsea and removing Roman Abramovich as a director. They weren't proactive, which is not leadership, because they don't know what to do on this subject. And football's got a big problem, because I don't think now it's going to be accepted anymore. I think there'll be a, an independent regulator put into football. I think it was coming anyway. But Super League, Saudi money, Russian money, Berry, Derby, lack of sustainability, lack of real-time financial monitoring, lack of fit and proper persons test. Football is absolutely coming under huge scrutiny. And it isn't just football. It's not just a football problem. This, you know, Russian money's washed its way through London, has washed its way into, you know, political parties. So it isn't just football, but football is a massive part of this country's fabric. And it will be the centre of what would be a lot of the sort of uh, things that happen and how it deals with it. And it's going to be an issue in the next couple of years. And I suspect if you're Abu Dhabi in Manchester, if you're Saudi Arabia at Newcastle, you're going to be doing your risk assessments, I would suggest, as we speak, thinking what's going to happen. Well, well football people are being entwined in these developments as well. We saw that situation when, when Chelsea played against Newcastle yesterday. Uh, and there are continued questions, as Gary says, around Newcastle's owners. The Guardian described it as a dark day for those who care for football's soul. The Times said it was the ethics derby and the Telegraph called it a bleak day for English football. And we had this situation after the game, Jamie, where Eddie Howe, the Newcastle manager, finds himself being quizzed on Saudi Arabia's human rights record and in, in uh, particularly the 81 executions that happened in one day, one single day in Saudi Arabia. Is that right? Is that fair for, for a, a football manager to be to be asking, answering those questions? Yes, I think it is. Uh, I think now with the situation of, of how everyone sees it and how so against it a lot of people are, and understandably so. Thomas Tuchel, I think you've mentioned it, I've mentioned how well he's actually handled this, this whole Ron Abramovich, obviously what's going on in Ukraine, I think he's handled it really well. The question to Eddie Howe uh, yesterday, and he said, I'm here just to, you know, obviously speak about the football situation. But you can feel the, the tone of the question is basically, Eddie, what are you doing working for the Saudis and PIF who run this club? You're not aware of what they do and what you've just mentioned. It's almost that insinuation. It's a very difficult position for him to be. And I, I wanted to ask you that because when I've seen the actual question to him and he's been criticised maybe for his response, what, what would your response have been in, in, in that situation? I, I, he's, I think he is in a difficult position there, Eddie Howe. A extremely difficult position. I think that Thomas Tuchel over this last few weeks has been statesmanlike in actually uh, standing up, getting the balance right between understanding that he is obviously working for the football club, but also that it's not right. And he's gone up in everyone's estimations immensely. I think Jurgen Klopp does that really well at Liverpool as well. You know, when there are social issues and political issues that come into their world, they handle them with great honour. And Thomas Tuchel's done it well. I think Eddie Howe is going to have to do that in the next seven to ten days, two weeks, because these questions are not going away. And in any other walk of life, we would be very nervous about working for an organisation that had money associated with it that wasn't particularly clean. And football, as if you like, over the last 20 years, been sort of, if you like, removed from that thinking that was sport and we've got to rise above it and we don't, if you like, accept the connection between sport and politics and, 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 and sports washing. But we've seen with the FIFA World Cup and where it's gone, we've seen with the corruption in UEFA and FIFA over a period of 10 years, we've seen now, obviously, with what's happened with Russia, that you know, sport is being scrutinised like you wouldn't believe. And it needs independence and it needs transparency. And that's why I think at this moment in time, if we're bringing it back to the Premier League, you know, it's too much for the executive of the Premier League at this moment in time. These are massive global issues that are hitting home on our doorstep. And Eddie Howe is having to deal with those. And he's not prepared to deal with those. I say he's not prepared. He's prepared from a media perspective, but he didn't take the job anticipating that he was going to be asked about these massive political issues relating to a war or mass executions in Saudi Arabia. Arabia, you know, he's a football person. But if you're a football manager now, you're going to have to stand up and answer those questions. And the one thing's for certain, the journalists have to ask them. They have to ask those questions. And I have to say, Abu Dhabi, Saudi Arabia, that it's going to come to Manchester City's people soon. Pep Guardiola's going to start getting asked these questions because it isn't going away. And if in the next year or two a regulator is brought in and it's found that you can't have state money in football in this country, 
they're going to have to potentially look back at what's happened in the last 15, 20 years because there's already state money in this country and that's something that's going to have to be looked at very closely because it's going to set a massive precedent with what they do with Russia. Well, you touched on it there in, in reference to the journalists who, these are sports journalists asking these questions, but you think they should carry on doing it. And the cost for them often is um, abuse and hounding on social media, sometimes even worse, sometimes some pretty serious threats. But you think they should just carry on? The sports journalists have to ask the questions. Dave, we have to ask the questions. There, were a there was a time, Dave, three or four years ago where we tried to stay away from these massive social and societal issues and these global issues. We can't anymore. We can't sit on here with a global game, a global brand, with, you know, ultimately sanctions being put on our, mass, our big football clubs by what would be the government of this country, governments of other countries, and not comment on it. We have to be basically uh, accountable. If you look at the top six clubs in this country, there's only probably Liverpool's owners at this moment in time that are popular with the fan base and haven't got any moral issues. The other five clubs, you know, Manchester United aren't happy with their owners, Arsenal aren't been happy with their owners, Tottenham are not happy with their owners, and City and Chelsea have got massive, what would be, moral issues with their ownership. Well, Gary, you mentioned Chelsea there. They're obviously looking to get new ownership in the next week or two. If they had a situation where it was someone from Saudi Arabia who had certain links the way Newcastle ownership do, do you think the Premier League should stop that? I think now there's been a, 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 there's been a, a, a headline today that there's been a £2.7 billion bid for Chelsea. We don't know whether it's true or not from a Saudi media company. I would be amazed if that Saudi media company was allowed to buy Chelsea Football Club off the back of what's happened. And I do think there is something absolutely coming on top very quickly when it comes to fit and proper persons tests. It's not resilient, it's not independent, it's not transparent. We don't know what criteria or hurdles the Saudis had to jump through to get into this country. And I was supportive of them coming in, even though I would probably reassess that at this moment today because of what's happened in the last 10 days. All right, well, we'll see what happens with Chelsea. As we said, final bids expected to be submitted on Friday and with uh, their hope is, of course, that they get a new owner uh, just as soon as they possibly can to steer through these uh, very difficult times.